move on to two ladies to try talking about Tom Segura. <clears throat> personally, I'm not going to lie. Personally, and maybe this is something that because I'm a bit too ambivalent and maybe I've just processed in my mind and the pod's over. But personally, I've got to be honest. I don't really give a fuck. Tom's been doing this little shtick of being like over it and not liking his fans and being anti-poor people for a long time. And, I'm, and I didn't like it when he was fat. I, I thought it was a bit corny. I thought it was kind of cringe. Even when he was fat and broke or fat and not as rich as he is was now, I or is was now, whatever. Um, I never really thought anything of it, really. It wasn't really the type of humor that I kind of warmed to. I never got it. But it's definitely a bit that Tom feels like works for him, right? He likes that kind of comedy i don't know why but he likes that sort of stuff the same way he kind of likes the whole thing of like who's that um country music singer that he says is a fucking serial killer and he gets all his fans to basically bomb the comments of this guy's um ig posts and shit it gets a bit crazy but he likes that type of comedy it's not really for me personally but clearly he's a fan of it so i guess people have been yeah garth it's it garth brooks garth brooks <clears throat> so i guess people have been noticing that Tom is out here perpetuating this, oh, you guys are broke, you guys are poor, poor people are losers, all this sort of shit on his fans, and people haven't been liking it too much. <clears throat> and Two Ladies to Try decided to put together a little video where he basically breaks it all down and talks about it. And people have been kind of debating about it online because I guess he, got, he had some tweets that went up that looked like he got hacked, but he clearly hadn't. He was just basically trolling for the sake of it. And people have now got a lot of questions that they're asking about what's going on. So we're going to play the video, Curse Your Two Ladies to Try. And then we're also going to get some of these fucking tweets up as well, if I can find them, of him saying the things that he's saying. So let's see let's see where we can get them. Bear with me a second here. Ba, 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 ba. So I think the original tweets, which I've got here via the Your Mum's House subreddit, are something along these lines, if I can get them up, bear with me a second. So I guess the tweets, that was, this is kind of like the basis of the tweets, right? If you can see it here, bear with me a second as I try to get it up on here. Da, 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 da. So this is the basis of the tweets. The basis of the tweets that he put up were these ones, right? On his fucking, ins on his Twitter, that was like, all these poor people, all these poor all these poors and losers have the same response. Oh, we're inconvenienced. Well, you should accept it. That's what me and my dumb poor family have to do for generations. This is why you are poor. Um, another one is calling a service. Okay, cool. So I guess it all started because he got into a tiff with American Airlines because of something happened with his flight. And he started to call them out online. And obviously people started to chime in. And another one he says here, the lowest level poors get upset as they've been trained to do when you point out they're happy to do what I'm told, servant mentality. <laughs> they don't value time because their time is worthless. Your specks of shit on a washcloth and washcloths belong in the trash. <laughs> anyway, whatever, man. It is what it is. Um, let's see what Two Ladies to Try had to say about it because he put out a video that I haven't watched yet. Let's see what he says here. Two Ladies to Try video. It says Tom Segura has completely lost touch with reality. Let's see what he's saying. Because personally, I don't really give a fuck, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't really bother me too much. It's just, it's just not funny. I don't really get personally triggered by it, though. But let's see what he's saying about this issue. Maybe I'll All right, something. so it's not looking too good for Tom Segura. He recently had a meltdown on Twitter, or X, I guess it is now. But I'm just going to keep calling Twitter. So Tom had a... By the way, I also hate that little disclaimer we all do. I've done it myself. Just commit. Commit to calling it X or commit to calling it Twitter. That disclaimer we all do where we try to sound like, oh, yeah, it's maybe X, but it's Twitter. It just sounds G-A-Y. Let's all stop it. Let's either call it Twitter or let's call it X. Either way, no more disclaimers. A Karen moment at an airport because... Oh, shit. Is that what he actually said? Dumb cunt from American Air made me gate check my bag so she feels the little power she has in her life. I get it. You win this round, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> okay that is kind of i don't know why but i guess i just i like comedy where it's just like i like i i just like 
pure chaos and psycho shit. And this is psycho shit. So I'm going to laugh at it. It might not be funny. Don't get me wrong. But it's some psycho shit. Have his bag checked in at the gate. And then he went to Twitter and just started going off on the person who made him check it in. And some people in the comments were telling him he was being a little dramatic. So then he started going Oh, off. hold on, hold on. I missed a tweet, so. Some people in the comments. Your whining sounds like she made the right call. Minor inconveniences. Oh, the horror. Tom, you sound like an airline employee. <laughs> okay. We're telling him. Telling him he was being a little dramatic so then he another one you sound pretty ego driven entitled from this post tom you've been losing touch with reality with your fan base can't even relate with what you say anymore that's what making that's what making too much money does to people i guess he says oh wow thanks for your cool insight <laughs> <laughs> sorry but tom's replies are funny come on come on Oh wow, thanks for your cool insight. I'd sure hate to lose touch with my with dumb fucks who can't relate to a bag check at the airport. Have fun on the choo choo, bud. <laughs> I'm sorry. I find this funny. I know it's not good, but this is very toxic and very aggressive to your fans, but I find this funny because I can't do this. I can't be a dick. I don't have the ability to be a dick to people who are nice to me. It just isn't in my nature. But Tom can, right? These people can. <laughs> and he started going off on poor people. I mean, this was wild. This dude's Ugh. ego is out of control. You know, he's probably already pissed. He's flying with American Airlines and he wasn't flying private. And he had to be around a bunch of poors, as he calls them. And then one of the poors who works for the airline had the audacity to tell him he had to gate check his bag because there wasn't enough room in the overhead containers and he couldn't fit it under his seat and he just snapped and i guarantee his thought process was why should i have to check my bag i'm rich and famous i'm flying in first class and i should be flying private why don't they make some poor person do this and he probably figured the lady at american airlines should know better she should know not to ask him to check in his bag so this is what he said on twitter dumb from american air made me gate check my bag so she feels the little power she has in her life i get it you win this round and he should have just ended it there but instead he started responding to like all the comments <laughs> and there were a bunch of people telling him he sounds entitled and he sounds like he's out of touch and of course these are pores to him so that really set him off and then he said all the pores and losers have the same response oh you're inconvenienced well you should accept it that's what me and my dumb poor family have done for generations this is why you're poor but it's like dude you did accept it your bag got checked in you let that happen and now you think you're doing something about it by arguing with a bunch of pores on twitter i mean he really lets these people get to him it's crazy if you remember he also had a similar moment I love the plural. I love the pause. Honestly, I love it. It sounds so middle-aged, right? It sounds so mid-century, like the pause. It sounds so, so insulting. <laughs> Way more than just saying you're poor. You are pause. <laughs> like there's a, there's, there's like a like there's, there's like a gaggle of paws, a consortium of paws, a group of paws, a family of paws. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair again to be fair to him he has had this type of edge and content for a while he's been doing this even when he was fat and didn't have as much money he was doing it so can you imagine how much more insufferable he is now that he's lost weight and he's making more money you know like he's always going to be this way like this is always on the cards i i came to peace with your mom's house not being what it once was because your mom's house legitimately your mom's house and joe budden podcast early between like 2015 and 2019 yeah i'm gonna say then 20, no, 2015 and 2018 the the joe budden podcast and your mom's house were golden years of podcasting some of those clips um that guy um robert robert champagne whatever his name is um i like to calm guy um fence the 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 fence something what's his name fence something the guy that died in a car from an overdose um the the fucking cl the people calling in the guys that would go and and do like pranks on customer service agents over the phone your mum's house was fucking incredible 2015 to 2018 then it just died yeah fed smoker that's the one quite a fed smoker 
Then it just fell off a cliff and the show's not as funny anymore. The banter between um, Tom and Christine, uh, Tommy Buns and Christine, the banter between Tommy, Tommy calling his mum, Tommy calling his dad when he was still alive, RIP to him. Like, it was fucking great. Then it went off, it fell off a cliff, unfortunately. Really, really sad, but that stuff used to get me through work, man. I'd be in my fucking retail jobs, listen to that shit in the stock room, crying, trying to hold in my laughter and not get fired. Like, honestly, I'd be crying. There'd be times where I saved the podcast, listen to it all the way in. And again, think about this, right? Your mum's house was so funny back in the day, you could listen to the audio without watching the video and be dying, like, dying crying. Then you would re-watch the video to see what the clips look like. Like, I'd watch the podcast. Again, there's not many pods I watched, I watched or listened to twice. Well, I listened to the audio, then I watched the video. That was how good that fucking show was. And unfortunately, it's not what it is. So I came to peace with it a long time ago. So And I accepted, you know, Tom's going to be the way he is. Christine's really, really insufferable. Um, not to put it, you know, not to be that guy, but I'm not going to lie. I'm surprised Tom hasn't divorced her. Not because she's annoying, but because of how he's acting, right? He's doing all the things that guys that get divorced do. He's losing weight. He's starting to look after himself, wear better clothes. The only thing he's missing is some bimbo. I'm surprised he hasn't gone all that way and got like a convertible and got himself a nice little, you know, um, loft apartment somewhere in Miami. I'm really surprised he hasn't done that yet. So, um, but yeah, I just can't handle the pod anymore. It is what it is. Moment to this earlier this year when people are commenting that they're sick of hearing him talk about watches and private jets and stuff and he went on this rant during his podcast and i think he believes he's doing some kind of andrew tate thing like especially with that tweet i just read oh. that sounded exactly like something andrew tate would say but at least okay. he can be somewhat funny when he's saying this stuff but whenever tom tries to do interesting interesting andrew tate do you think that's what he's trying to do Huh. He just comes across more nasty though. That's the thing with Tom. He sounds like he's being for real. Like he legitimately like I've always said to my I've always said on this pod, on my stream, sorry, not this pod, on this stream that sometimes gets turned into a pod. I've said before on this stream that I honestly think most comedians don't like their fans. Most of them. Which is interesting because I feel like most stand up comedians have working class, middle class and sometimes upper middle class fans, like regular people that work regular jobs, yet they look down on them. Like most comedians think if you were if you were if you work a regular job, you have a nine to five, they think less of you. They don't think you're anything to bother about because you haven't chased your dreams, you haven't opened your own sushi bar, you're not making your own custom knives or your own fucking whatever Joe would talk about. Like they actually look down on you. That's a weird thing even though you your support and your views and your clicks and your you know buying of merch and shit is what affords them their lifestyle but they actually don't respect you really it's odd their relationship with you is only like give me money watch my stuff you know like my tweets give me positive kind of you know engagement and that's it they don't want to hear any constructive criticism from you they don't want to hear any feedback they don't want you to ask them for anything the relationship is just one way you know, it's really odd. This kind of thing, it's just not funny at all because I don't think he's trying to be funny. I think he's being serious and he's actually just really pissed off. And if he is trying to be funny, then it's a bad sign that this man is supposed to be a comedian. So don't put it on me. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, sorry, um, Z said, people who jump from poor to middle class to look down on the pause. Yeah, but it's not only that though. I feel like there's something... Someone said once before to me that it was it's a pretty it's a it's a like it's like a conservative pipeline. Like once you like once you make it yourself, most people go right as in like politics wise, because it's like, you know, it's like a pull yourself up by a bootstrap mentality. You have this idea that because you made it, everyone else can do it too. I feel like there's something to be said with people who go from, again, like you said, not making a lot of money to making a lot of money, but also losing weight when they're always fat. 
there's something that happens. Like sometimes you, you can turn into being a good dude, but sometimes you could you could turn into being a kind. I don't know if you guys have known this, but I've I don't know maybe because I've seen it before in my kind of friend circle where there's been dudes who were kind of fat before, lose weight, and then they turn into pricks. They turn into cunts. They have a bit of an ego trip, um, and then they start to look down on other people who who, who are as fat as them in the past because they're like, hey, if I can do it, why can't you do it? You're just a lazy fuck, and they start to kind of hate them because they remind them of their old self. It's a really strange thing. So I'm making, there's a lot of that in it. But I also think it's not that crazy to psychoanalyze. I just personally think Tom has always been that guy. He's just got money now and he's doing what he wants to do. It's like what people always say, money is a great equalizer, isn't it? It doesn't change you. It just amplifies what you already are. So that's what I think it is. It's not anything that deep, to be fair. That you feel bad, that I have something that, oh, but... I, I'm struggling with rent this month. Figure it the fuck out, okay? <laughs> like, don't make my life be a problem for your life. If you don't like it, guess what? You're not going to be able to control what people talk about. People are going to talk about things that you don't have for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> so you can decide, like, okay, I won't li Fine, don't listen to me. Don't listen to that person anymore. But you have to control your own feelings, okay? It's not on other people to make sure they don't talk about a topic. Just know that it's your mindset. And you're thinking like a f***ing loser. Jesus Christ, bro. But you don't have to. You don't. You can change the way you think. But you have to accept the way you're thinking right now is not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> you're being bitter. You're being petty. You're insecure. <sighs> you're not confident. And it's a bad sign Jesus that this is one of the top Christ. comedy podcasts. And like the title of this post says, Tom loses 20 pounds and he thinks he's the second coming of Christ. <laughs> and also... <laughs> That's a fucking horrible picture. To be fair, Tom looks so fantastic. He legit looks like how Lee Sayat used to look. Like, he looks horrible there. That's the thing about weight, isn't it? You don't realise how fat you were or how fat someone else was until they lose weight. You don't realise, which is why sometimes it's really infuriating when you're losing weight, especially if you're fat, you have people around you, which I think is a... I think it's a fucking insecurity you lose weight and the people around you start telling you oh you're you're losing too much weight you need to relax going to the gym how about you eat something have something to eat <sighs> because you're making them feel bad because you're putting in an effort to kind of lose some weight it's really annoying that people do that but i do find it really interesting how you never know how fat you are until you start to lose weight and tom is clearly that guy because he legit looks even worse than lisa out here lisa out now looks fucking incredible big up the flying jew he looks really good, Lee Sayer. He's kind of kept a lot of the weight off. Um, yeah, I never knew he was that big. But he's still got the head shape, you know? He's still got the fucking head shape. So where would this guy's career be without Joe Rogan? I mean, he acts like, oh, I just put in all the hard work and that's how I became really successful, which I'm... Fucking hell, Rich Cook. I hope his weight loss is a symptom. <laughs> Honestly, you guys are going to hell and I'm joining you. I'm driving the bus to hell. Da, 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 da. Off to hell we go, off to hell we go, off to hell we go for laughing at comedians, off to hell we go. <laughs> I'm sure he worked hard, but obviously a massive part of it is him becoming friends with Joe Rogan, and he got extremely lucky with that. But I think these recent meltdowns from Tom have shown he's hit his peak. And and it's only downhill. What's this? Um, this person says, straight up, this is why I stopped listening to YMH, consuming Tom's content. He's been such a stuck up little bitch for like the last two years. That's ruined the funny. He literally thinks he's the Ubermensch or something uh, because Rogan put him on and suddenly he's all about the bootstraps life, even though his dad was a fucking hedge fund manager and Tom never had to work an actual job ever. That's funny, you know. That's the funny thing about it. You know that? Yo, big up young old vibes. Wagwan, my G. The amount of comedians who've never had a full-time job for a year is crazy, if you think about it. But I guess it's the same in all arts, right? In all the forms of art and entertainment, the ones who are at the top are the ones who can afford it, right? Like, not everybody can afford to do the internship and shit and work for free. But most of them haven't had actual jobs, but yet they pontificate on you know, the job market, the job industry, unemployment, social, like whatever, that all the stuff on podcasts where they haven't even worked a regular job. I would love, I would love one day if somebody did the same, you know what I did to like Oprah, or the, I think I did to Bill Gates. 
I would love it if one day they would never do it because it would be too it would be too bait. I would love it if one day they would ask like Joe, Tom, Bert to like tell you what the price of a bottle of milk is or something. Or like a carton of orange juice from like warm, like a shop, whatever, Walmart, whatever. I'd love if they asked one day, like, how much do you think a pack of six eggs is? Like, dude, they, they don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> I mean, they never go and buy their own shopping. Do you know what I mean? That's a maid or it gets delivered to them or some shit and someone else orders it. Like, they have no idea. They'll probably have a social... I think Bill Gates, when they asked Bill Gates what the price of a pint of milk was, what did he say? I think he said like $30 or something, didn't he? like $20, $30 for a pint of milk. I was like, bro, you do not buy anything, can it? From here, you know, things are not heading in a good direction for him. And I feel like this is what comedians used to fear, becoming out of touch and not being relatable anymore to their audience. But Tom is clearly not worried about that. And it's like he's trying to do a speed run and become out of touch as quickly as possible. Like, God forbid he has to fly commercial and check in a bag at the gate. But so let's just stop him again. But the out of touch thing, I was saying before, like, there's a segment of the fan base that I think like to get I think this stuff that he's doing, again, maybe I'm being a little bit too thinking about this, right? But I feel like the stuff that Tom does is sort of similar to that crowd work. You know what I mean? I think the fans secretly like being shitted on by Tom. They kind of like it. So I don't think it's going to change anything. He's not going to lose any fans or not sell out shows. I think his fans kind of enjoy being kind of like mocked, right? And insulted like this. I think they kind of like it. They do. I honestly do think so. It's a weird sort of group of f comedy fans that actually like to get dunked on by their fucking comedians. We got Keith Thompson. They flooded the market with their content and now people are losing interest from an oversaturated YouTube. 100 million percent. Thank you for the super chat, my friend. You are 100 percent right. Um, that's why I think I don't believe the term of the podcast bubble bursting. What I think is what you said is true. I think they flooded the market. They oversaturated what was available. And there's only so many. You know how they say there's only 1,000 comedians? I think there's only a finite amount of people that listen to podcasts about comedy shit. I don't think there's many, like, think about it, you guys in this stream chat. How many of your friends or family members or work colleagues that you know listen to the same pods that you do? Not many, I would, I would guess. There's only a small amount of us out there who are disobsessed to watch streams, to watch YouTube channels like Two Ladies to Try, to be on Reddit and Discord. There's not many of us. So I think what they did wrong, they over, they kind of saturate us. They flooded us. They gave us too much. And there's only so many of us who can listen to stuff. And there's only so many hours in a day. Of, over time, it was bound to go under. That's what I think happened, personally. I don't think it was a bubble bursting. I think it's them actually getting too giddy, getting too greedy, seeing all the ad money coming in and thinking that this is going to go on forever. But there is only a finite amount of comedy podcast listeners out there. There's only a small amount of people that listen to fucking podcasts. Honestly, not many people listen to pods. Legit. Not many people actually listen to fucking podcasts. So the fact that they thought that there was enough podcast listeners out there of comedy shit, that they would listen to all their shitty shows. Come on, bro. Doesn't this lady know who he is? Doesn't this lady know he's friends with Joe Rogan? He deserves better than this. And in his initial tweet, he tagged American Airlines, so they pretty much had to respond. And I don't know what he really expected here. I don't know what he wanted them to say. Maybe he wanted to get that lady fired or something, but he was not happy with their response. They said, we know you're no rookie, Tom, and you know how to pack a bag. We're sorry for the hassle today. And then Tom's response to this was wild. He said, this is a psychological tactic that well-trained people across all business use because it's effective they empathize with customers emotions typically people feel seen and heard and immediately calm down after this acknowledgement i still wish awful things on that gay agent i think Jesus they should give that Christ. gay agent a raise i mean this is amazing what she's accomplished here like this guy is oh i'd honestly i thought he said i still wish awful things on that gay agent not gate I was about to say, fucking hell, Tom, you're going for it, isn't it? I honestly thought it said gay, gay agent, not gate. <laughs> I was about to say, Tommy Bond is going fucking nuclear. 
But he didn't go that far. He said gate agent. Fair play. Losing his mind because of this. I mean, he spent hours on Twitter just responding to people and then making all these stupid tweets that Poor. just made things even worse. And I'm sure Joe Rogan gave him a call to tell him this because Rogan's always telling these people not to read comments and not to pay attention to that kind of stuff. And this is just a bad look for Tom. You I sound mean, like a pre-Madonna, like someone who was here before Madonna. What? Don't get that. I mean, the man is imploding here. This is so bad. People had a hard time believing it's even real. People are like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. NJ Rangers, this ninja. <laughs> Good times, man. We have fun on these little streams. We have fucking fun. All right, is that actually his Twitter account? I can't imagine he said this, but I mean, he did. And I know some people say, oh, he's joking around here. I don't understand how he's joking around. I mean, he's clearly really upset about this. He tagged American Airlines. He's responding to them. He's responding to all these comments and he's pissed off. Like also he put out this other tweet responding to all the people telling him to take it easy. He said, the lowest level pours get upset as they've been trained to do. When you point out they're happy to do what I'm told, servant mentality. They don't value time because their time is worthless. You are specks of shit on a washcloth and washcloths belong in the trash. And I like how he says they don't value time because their time is worthless. Meanwhile, he's spending hours on Twitter arguing with random people, getting nowhere, just making a fool out of himself. Like if he thinks he's above these people and he's so important, doesn't he have better things to be doing than sure. arguing with them? I mean, it sounds like he doesn't value his time and he gets triggered very easily by these people. I mean, a checked bag led to all this. And you know, for what people usually have to deal with at airports when they're traveling, Jesus I'd say Christ. this is just a minor inconvenience. Jesus Christ, bro. It's a zoo at Denver Airport right now. Jesus Christ. Fucking hell. Imagine missing your flight because of this group, a gaggle of, there's not a gaggle, this is a consortium of people. Jesus. Genius. And Tom let it ruin his day, possibly his week. I mean, this man is going through it. And it'll be interesting to see if he addresses this on his podcast at all. And if he does, I'll probably cover it. So, of course, you'll address it. But unfortunately, it won't be on Two Bears, One Cave because they filmed that fucking podcast months in advance. I think the latest episode they had out was like an episode from like August or something been recorded. It's fucking crazy how they bank episodes and just so far in advance. Like I've recorded stuff previously. So in advance, like maybe a couple of days, but not like months. Like that is just insane, bro. Like fuck me. So it takes some ages to get to actual current topics. So if you want to hear from Tom regarding this, you probably have to listen to your mom's house. Um, so that should be interesting to see. But what do I think? I actually, like I said, I don't give a fuck. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I really don't give a fuck. Um Tom's been doing this weird poor, I'm better than you bit thing for a while. He used to do it with stand up comedy, um, with ticket sales, with touring. It's kind of been his stick. His shtick, sorry. So now that he's got money and he's become more successful, he's gonna double down on it and do it even more. And now that he's lost weight and he's always been kind of anti fat anyway, he's also gonna do it. Um, and kind of dunk on people that have been fat. It just is what it is. Um, I think his fans like him for that, that kind of abrasive kind of attitude that he has and the kind of edgelord, shitposting type of personality that he kind of exudes. People love him for that. So I don't think it's going to hurt him in terms of ticket sales and fan bases and shit. And eventually he'll stop doing it and people will forget. He'll make a joke and everyone will love him again. So I don't think it's that deep of an issue, but it's just unfortunate if you're a fan of him, when I started being a fan of your mom's house, like 2015, 2009 to 2019, your mom's house was peak fucking content, was so good. That that Tommy is dead and gone, unfortunately. Um, so it is a bit of a shitter to like see him the way he is now. But I think similar to like the fans of H3, H3, right? Ethan Klein guy. You have to just, you know, you have to accept reality. Ethan Klein isn't the same Ethan Klein that you liked before when he was doing the videos and shit. Um, now that he's on the podcast and whatever, sharing some of his opinions of views, he's kind of, I wouldn't say he's changed, but you've seen a different side of him and you have to decide now as a fan, do you what do you, do you you like this version of Ethan or not? If you don't, jump off and find somebody else. If you do, or if you don't mind, whatever, indifferent, you have to just hunker down and be okay with going through some troubled waters being a fan of his. It just is what it is, unfortunately. Uh, it, it, it basically happens to a lot of content creators. I won't say all, but I think a lot of content creators struggle not to end up like that 
it's really unfortunate to be honest. I, I'll prefer it not to be the case, but I think it's quite hard for these guys not to end up like cunts for some 